Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at that time that it rained meat. On March the 3rd, 1876, when Mrs. Crouch was working in her yard in Bath County, Kentucky, she was making soap. It was at this point that suddenly meat, which looked like beef, began to fall all around her. The sky was perfectly clear at the time. Falling like a large snowflakes and settling all around the 5,000 square foot yard, pieces of flesh ranging in size from about 2 inches square to 4 dotted the grounds and were even stuck on the fences. When it first appeared, the meat was said to be fresh and, accordingly, two unidentified but brave men even sampled it. They claimed it tasted a bit gamey, like mutton or even venison. The story was published in the New York Times on March the 9th, and it caught the attention of Leopold Brandeis, who was able to get his hands on a sample that had been preserved in glycerin. After examining it, Brandeis declared that the meat wasn't a supernatural phenomenon, or in fact, according to him, even meat at all, but a substance called Nostoc. Nostoc has been known to scientists since at least the 16th century when it was named by Paracelsus. As with the Kentucky shower early on, people believed that Nostoc fell from the sky in large chunks, or more rightly, blobs, and to medieval people, it was known as witch's jelly and troll's butter. Technically a genus of cyanobacteria that live in colonies, it's not clear when people realize that Nostoc does not, in fact, come from the sky, but rather from the soil. When dry, it is easy to overlook Nostoc as it appears as a dark, flaky crust. However, after rain, Nostoc will swell up into jelly-like masses. This led people to think that it fell from the sky with the rain. Thus, one of its nicknames was Star Jelly. Edible and said to taste like chicken or frog, Brandeis was convinced that the Crouches had nothing more than bacterial blobs on their hands. However, although his hypothesis accounted for some of the details in the report, he had overlooked two important points. One, there was eyewitness testimony that claimed they actually saw the substance falling from the sky, and two, it was a clear day with no rain. Further investigations were also conducted, including one by histologist Dr. A. Mead Edwards. He examined the chunks and concluded that the substance was definitely not Nostoc, but rather hunks of flesh. From the tissue samples he had, it appeared to come from the lungs of either a horse or a human baby. A third investigation by another histologist, Dr. J. W. S. Arnold, confirmed the presence of lung tissue, but also found animal cartilage. Subsequent investigators confirmed both histologists' findings and also revealed muscular tissue. Finally, one man provided a hypothesis that covered all of the facts, and that was L. D. Kastenbein. Kastenbein was a professor of chemistry at the Louisville College of Pharmacy, and he published an article on the matter that same year in the Louisville Medical Journal. Kastenbein concluded that the best explanation was that supplied by an old Ohio farmer. The meat had been vomited by several vultures who were flying too high to be seen. Many varieties of vulture can fly shockingly high. King of them all is the Ruppel's vulture, which can fly as high as nearly 40,000 feet, which is about 12,000 meters. By the way, for reference here, Mount Everest is a little over 29,000 feet. Given that the chunks fell from a great height, they would have been scattered by the wind over a relatively large area. Both the turkey vulture and the black vulture are found in that part of Kentucky, and both have been observed projectile vomiting the contents of their stomachs, sometimes in or just before they take flight. They particularly do this in the presence of a predator, with the discarded contents of their stomachs simultaneously distracting the predator, while also lightening the vulture's load for flight. When one vomits, this also induces others nearby to vomit as well. As to why this flock of vultures vomited at such an altitude is anyone's guess, but this is the most likely hypothesis hypothesis for the scenario. Now for some bonus facts. In November of 1970, whale meat rained from the sky over a portion of Oregon. The cause of this one, it's definitely known. The Oregon Department of Transportation had the bright idea of disposing of a dead beached sperm whale by blowing it up with half a ton of dynamite. This did not work out as anticipated, and instead of disintegrating much of the whale, huge, flying, very dangerous chunks of whale were launched in all directions, with one large chunk destroying a car a quarter of a mile away from the detonation point. Point. And now for another bonus fact. Frogs and toads have been reported falling from the skies many times. In 1794, near Le Lans in France, 150 French soldiers were pelted with hundreds of toads, many of which still retained some of their tadpole tails. That is not even to mention the relatively common phenomenon known as spider rain, which you can learn more about in a video that we previously made. Find a link to that in the description below. 
So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got a podcast. It's called Brain Food. It's content just like this, but in the podcast form, we go into a bit more depth and really get into all of the details on a particular subject. Check it out through the links in the description below, or just search your favorite podcast app for Brain Food. And if you like this YouTube channel, I think you will really love that podcast. But if you want to watch something else right now, check out a related video from the past over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.